Uh, there is one thing I could not get on a 2022 Africa Twin, and that's this. Check that out. Twist the throttle, power up wheelie, no clutch, second gear. You just don't get that. Doesn't matter what Africa Twin you're on. You can't, you can't compete with 160 claimed horsepower. And hey, welcome to Dan's ADV. In today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about my 2022 KTM 1290 Adventure R. A little bit of a compare and contrast and review against my 2018 Africa Twin Adventure Sports. I'm going to tell you how I ended up with both of these bikes and which one I'm keeping. So in the immortal words of the Mist and Flyer, stick around and stay tuned. <laughs> So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may know that I've been riding this Africa Twin Adventure Sport since I bought it new in 2018. It's been a fantastic motorcycle. It has a lot of sentimental connection to this bike. I've done the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route twice. I've done the New Mexico uh, Backcountry Discovery Route on it. I did a tour of Baja with Bill Dragoo and West 38 Moto. I've had it in Moab. I've had it on countless local rides. It's just been a fantastic motorcycle. It's never given me any issues. I've never been broken down on the side of the road other than tire punctures, which is another story altogether. And then the only thing that's ever been done to it is there was a factory recall for some either weld slag or paint inside of the tank on some bikes of this year make and model where we're getting into the fuel pump. But that I had the recall done, but I never had the actual issue. So in any case, it's been a fantastic bike. And um, then how come I have this bike sitting next to me? There's really three main factors that got me looking for another bike. One was on my Baja trip, which is, there'll be a link above, with West 38 Moto and Bill Dragoo. I got to ride uh, Bill's BMW for a little bit. And having a high horsepower adventure bike is kind of addictive. It's, I blame another Honda, mainly this Honda. This is my 2011 CBR 1000 RR that I've been taking to track days. That is only added to my desire to be able to twist the throttle and just go. So, with those two factors in mind, I kind of started looking, not seriously, but like, I wonder what I would get, what's available, what's price ranges, all the things. I'm just still not really ready to pull any triggers. Uh, but then I had an amazing, kind of once in a lifetime opportunity, which I hope to highlight in a future video. But a friend was flying to Seattle from Tulsa to buy a 2022 KTM Super Adventure R just like this one. And they was gonna ride it back. And when I started looking at the ride and talking to him, we're talking about seeing Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, the Columbia River Gorge, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, go, maybe doing a couple sections of the Colorado BDR. And then the guys I was gonna get to ride with, I just couldn't pass it up. So I started looking at renting a motorcycle, how much would it cost to rent one way and all those things. And I realized that the cost of renting a bike would probably be about the same amount of money I would lose if I just bought a bike, if I could find a good deal and rode it back. Well, my buddy had been sending me all these videos about his KTM uh, and it kind of got me sold on that. So anyway, Long story short, I found this one in a uh, Portland area, and it was a great deal. I felt like I could not lose too much money if I brought it back and I decided to sell it. So I flew out with him. I got this one in Portland. He got his in Seattle, and then we met up and, with a couple other guys and rode them home. So that's how the three main reasons I ended up buying a new bike. But then why this bike? things on this Africa Twin that I would improve if I could. Some of them I could have improved by just buying the new Africa Twin. But uh, cruise control, I could have got that either way. This bike doesn't have it, but the new Africa Twin does. Of course the KTM does. Cruise control, a quick shifter, 
uh, tubeless tires. I've been broken down on the side of the road, as I've referred to already, too many times with tubes. Uh, tubeless tires are a game changer off-road when you can just plug them in 10 minutes and move on. Uh, you can still carry a tube and, and a catastrophe happens, throw a tube in there, but the quick fixes on tubeless is nice. And again, the new Africa Twin Adventure Sports is tubeless. And I could have made some of these modifications to this bike. Um, the quick shifter, um, those are the things that kind of come to mind immediately that I was in the market for. But one of the things I was in the market for um, that I could not get on the Africa Twin is a whole lot more horsepower. Check that out. Twist the throttle, power up wheelie, no clutch, second gear. So that's where I thought maybe the KTM could, could kind of be the best of all worlds. I got the cruise control, I got the quick shifter, I got all the ride modes, I get incredible amount of horsepower, it's a rowdy bike, it's better balanced with the gas tank uh, having the fuel down low, and it actually feels lighter to move around the garage. But that's not to say it's perfect, and that's not to say the choice wasn't tough, because this has been so rock solid reliable. The KTM, I know I get a lot of hate for this, but the reputation, at least, of the KTM is that it's not a super reliable brand. And to be honest, within 150 miles of buying this bike, I was broken down on the side of the road. Now, it wasn't the fault of the actual engineering of the bike, rather either the dealer or the manufacturer quality control didn't turn on one of the valves in the gas tank. So there's two gas tank valves, one on each side. I was on the side of the road, I had to call around trying to find a tow truck, couldn't find anything, ended up doing research, figuring out that I had to take off a side panel I could investigate and see if that was the problem, and indeed it was. One of the valves was not open, so I just opened the valve, had gas again, and kept on moving. But then again, every day on the trip for 3,000 miles back from Seattle to Tulsa, I had to fill up the coolant because the coolant bottle would be empty every morning, full at night, it's bizarre. Online on the forums you can see that the water pump housing has a flaw where it is coolant is leaking out and that's exactly where mine was leaking. So I've attempted, as you can see from this video, to take, you have to take everything off the bike, take the gas tank off, all of the fairings, everything, and get down and I put two hose clamps on that point and I hope that that fixes it. Uh, but that being said, I think you just know that when you buy a high-strung KTM motorcycle that it's not going to be a Honda. So you have to decide what do you want. And I've been playing it safe with Honda for a long time and I haven't regretted it, but I just wanted a little more excitement, a little more wheelies. I mean, if you hit the, the gas in second, third gear, that wheel's coming up if you're in the right mode. Um, it's I feel more comfortable with this off-road for some reason. It feels lighter. It, uh, it feels like I can handle rougher terrain on this bike. And so uh, I pulled the trigger on it. So right now, uh, this one is actually for sale as much as I hate to say it. And I'm going to go the KTM route. But stick around and stay tuned to the channel. I may have some uh, updates as far as whether or not I made the right choice in the near future. As far as what I've done to this bike, um, all of the standard things, I put the GPS rack on it so that it had a GPS. Uh, I have, of course, just a RAM mount for my phone. I've got the, the um, breakaway mirrors, the double take mirrors for the, for the RAM mount for the mirrors. I added a tank ring for my uh, SW Motec tank bag. The factory, or at the dealer, I had them add these Turatec pannier racks. I actually wanted black, but this is all they had, and I needed them, as you'll find out from my, hopefully my next video. So I've got the Turatec pannier racks. I use SW Motec, or I use uh, Moscow Moto soft bags. So these are the Moscow plates, so I can just slide my soft bags on. I added an Amazon under the pannier toolbox, keep all my tools lo uh, locked and loaded, even if I don't have anything else on the bike. I've got tools. Uh, I did buy some cheap Amazon big rally pegs that are orange that I'm pretty happy with. I don't see any reason to spend more money on those at this point. And um, I put uh, a Shinko 805 on the back because I burned up the factory tire at the 3,000 miles. I'll probably burn through these. Um, and I just bought the back tire to go ahead and finish off the front and then I'll come up with another solution. 
So that's what I've done to this bike. It's it's a lot of fun to ride. It's been fantastic when, at, at, from that perspective, and uh, we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.